good morning. I'm at home today for our Tuesday morning devotional. I don't know if you can hear my grandfather clock, but it is chiming in the background. Uh, I've got a little fire going. I just decided to do a little different location for this devotional this morning and uh, hope that uh, hope that all of you are uh, taking a moment uh, for yourself, wherever you are, uh, to focus on the Lord and on his perfect will for our lives this morning. I'm going to give people a few moments to get online and get to our post. And while we are waiting for people to join in, I want to let you know that our worship services will continue to be uh, virtual and we will not be doing in-person worship at least until February 7th. And then on February 7th, we will resume the in-person option as well as continuing our virtual. I'm seeing some people join in. I see Faye, I see Joe, I see Joanne, I see uh, B. Watson. Welcome everybody. There might be some more people on there whose names didn't pop up on my screen and candidly, it's hard for me to see that far. <laughs> um, but I'm so glad that you all are uh, joining us this morning and, and glad that you, you have uh, chosen to tune in. So we'll begin in-person worship again when we feel that the COVID numbers are a little lower, when we see that hospital beds are a little less in demand. We, we don't want to be part of a problem. We want to be part of a solution. And so that's why we're taking a little break from the in-person worship. And um, good morning, Patty. Good to see you this morning. Um, Another announcement I want to make as people are tuning in is that we do have a Bible study starting on Sunday called Invitation to the Bible. This Bible study is a, a good overview of how the Old Testament and the New Testament fit together, how that the God of creation is also the God of Jesus Christ, uh, understanding how that Jesus is the fulfillment of things uh, spoken of in the Old Testament and um, I think it'll be very meaningful and powerful. We've had one session of it already in the fall, and this is the second session of it in the spring. We have friends that are joining our Bible study who are regular participants in the life of the church before COVID began. And then we also have people joining the Bible study who have not been a part of the church before. So it's gonna be a wonderful experience. There is a Zoom option, and there is also a live option in either way you are welcome to be a part of the study. I do hope you will let us know that you'd like to be in it. Um, you can private message the church on Facebook and say, I'd like to be in the Bible study that starts Sunday, or you can send us any questions you have. You can private message me. Um, but I, I hope you'll consider joining in if you don't have a Bible study you're part of right now. It's, it's a great time to, to use this uh, COVID-19 time to our advantage to try to get a little more God into our daily life. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and get started with the study. I see Sip this morning joining in. Good morning, Sip. There's several others. And Peter, good morning, Peter. Glad everybody is uh, joining in. We are in the midst of a series of messages in worship called Wholesome. And we're talking about what it looks like when we invite God to every aspect of our lives. The first week, we talked about the Godward life and what does it mean when everything points toward God. And then we got specific this last Sunday and talked about God and our physical health. Jesus's earthly ministry described in Luke chapter 7 verses 17 through 23 uh, is, is one of healing. It's one where that Jesus brought much physical healing into the world and that physical healing is a sign that he is who he says he is. It's a sign that he is the one sent from God and he refers to that physical healing in that way that's an important part of Jesus' ministry is that physical healing. Um, we hear uh, in, in the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament uh, this quote from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, that says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And part of loving God with our strength is loving God with the use of our physical bodies. And there's lots and lots in the Bible that talks about how we use our physical bodies, the food we put into it, and uh, the, uh, the work we do. Um, the exercise was foreign to people uh, in ancient times. 
uh, largely because that they had to do a lot of physical labor to live their daily lives. There were things like the Olympics and so forth, uh, but those were more of uh, more for people who were uh, of more elite classes. And so uh, the people that the Bible is written to, uh, they did not necessarily always have to engage in a lot of physical activity. And so um, uh, intentionally, because they had that as a part of their daily living, things that they had to get done. And there may have been some exercising that they did, but but a lot of a lot of what they had to do was uh, related to their daily living. However, Paul in the New Testament does compare the faith to running a race and uh, keeping the faith. And so there is that little element that creeps in as well as we get into the New Testament. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, it says, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Do everything for the glory of God. And the context of this verse is that the people were thinking about whether or not they could eat food that had been used in pagan temples as an offering to false gods. You know, they, they would uh, do some bloodletting of, of the meat and, and give that blood as an offering to God. And then the meat would be left over and you could just sell it at the butcher shop, essentially. And you could, if you were eating with a friend who was a pagan, you could uh, eat that food with them. And so then the question is, is that right? And Paul talks about the different ins and outs of this. And he says, do whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, do this to the glory of God. And I just wonder how many times we think of God's glory when we think of what we eat. How many times do we think of God's glory? Uh, for most of us, we do not ever find ourselves in a situation where we have to worry about the fact that the food we've eaten has been sacrificed to an idol. Um, I did have a situation years ago where uh, a roommate that I had who was a Muslim invited me to a feast uh, where that uh, it was uh, lambs that were cooked and the lambs, uh, their blood had been, had been shed in the Muslim temple. And, you know, so maybe occasionally you're going to have something where somebody of another religion of the world invites you to engage in something you don't quite understand. Uh, but <clears throat> to do everything we do to the glory of God and to think about that with our eating, I just think about that a lot because that um, there is so much bad heart health in my family. And I think about the, the, the habits that contribute to that and how that it shortened people's lives in my family. And and maybe things that God would have loved for people to have been able to do in their lifetime that they were not physically able to do because they were not healthy enough to get to do those things. Maybe their lifespan wouldn't have changed. You know, maybe that's, that's something that the Lord, uh, maybe there was something determined in that. I, I don't know, but, but the quality of their lives would have changed. And so, so we think about this and, and think about um, our responsibility to do the most with every gift we've been given and that includes our physical bodies. That includes our exercise and using our bodies so that they will last, uh, taking care of our bodies so that they will work well. And so I asked Sunday the question, what is it that gets in the way when we are talking about the use of our physical bodies and, and, and the health that we are trying to cultivate? What gets in the way? And I'll tell you one thing for myself, a, a realization that I had is that a long time ago, I set this goal that I was gonna be healthy enough to take my kids to the city museum in St. Louis, and we were gonna get through the whole thing, and I was gonna be thin enough to do it, and I was gonna have the energy to do it, and um, there are some very small spaces, but I'm five feet tall, and I want you to know, good news for me, I got through every nook and cranny of that place. Uh, the, the tightest spot in the city museum, I have been in it, and I've been around it. I, I went through every single spot uh, a couple summers ago. That was something we did. And I had that goal in my mind for a long time. And then I didn't set another goal for what I feel like I need to do next. Um, I uh, don't have a mission trip on the horizon that I'm wanting to be healthy and active for. Uh, there's not a family trip that I had in the back of my mind. And without that goal and thinking about that, that was something that had cheered me on and without thinking about that uh, my physical health i just hadn't focused on it as much and then covid and not able to exercise and so 
it's time for me, as I said in, in uh, one of the two sermons that were posted on Sunday, to step away from the fork and to step into the gym, just, just to be honest. I mean, that's where I'm at right now. I've got to get uh, back on track with my physical health, and so I'm gonna be setting some new goals of things that I want to do. And I wanted to share that with you because maybe that's part of an issue for you. Is there some kind of a goal that you can set for yourself that you need to work toward related to your health that is more exciting than a number on a scale or a size of clothing or something like that. What kind of things do you need physical health for to do next? Um, do you have a vision of yourself being able to garden uh, for the next several years and the kind of stooping and bending that that would take and the, the kind of health and energy that that's gonna take? How are you gonna work toward that? Do you have a vision of a trip that you want to take? Maybe you want to take your family to the Grand Canyon, or maybe you want to be somebody that goes on a tour of Italy or something like that. Uh, how are you going to be physically able to do that? Uh, maybe you want to go on a mission trip and you want to know that you can handle a long flight and getting there and getting feet on the ground and doing some hard physical activity for God. I would love for our church to get to have a mission trip overseas uh, in the next few years. And that's something that when COVID is over, I really, really want us to work in that direction. I think it would be wonderful. Um, think about the goals that you have and, and the callings that you have for your life. Um, if you're somebody that's called to be active and, and healthy with others in your life as a parent, if you need to be strong for a spouse or another loved one, if you need to take care of your parents, if, if you want to be somebody that is there for your grandchildren, uh, keep those goals in your mind and, and, and hold them in your mind and, and work towards them. Uh, put, put something somewhere that will remind you of what your goals are um, and, and uh, keep that in mind. I think it's important to have friends that support us in our goals and to uh, be, be uh, conscientious with us about what kind of goals we're trying to have with our health and, and um, uh, it, you can be a good influence on the people around you. You can be the person that invites a friend to a walk instead of to coffee. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with coffee, but I'm just saying that those kinds of things, those little changes we can make can make a big difference. And so I want to ask you to, to continue this week praying about what it is that God wants you to do with your physical health. God gave you this body. We think about everything that's wrong with our bodies, but really uh, everything that we wish were a little different. Uh, but really the fact of the matter is our bodies are amazing gifts from God. They're amazing machines. They do so much and they can do so much. And it is uh, awe-inspiring that God made these intricate machines that are known as our bodies. And we need to take care of them because they're gifts from God. So Think about what it is that God wants you to do for your physical health. Pray about it. Ask God to show you some goals, some hopes and dreams that you could accomplish if you have uh, maintained your health well over the years. Of course, we know sometimes things happen out of the blue to somebody that is pretty much beyond their control. And we have a number of people that battle with health struggles right now, but even trying to reach good and lofty goals for our physical health gives us some resources when those unexpected things come. And uh, I'm, I'm cheering a lot of people on who are fighting major battles with their health right now. And I want to do what I can to make sure that I maximize the health I've given because seeing that struggle reminds me that I am incredibly blessed. I'm incredibly blessed to have the health I have right now and I want to maximize that. So let's go to God in prayer and you can post your prayer concerns. I encourage you if you're watching the video to look over the prayer concerns as we, um, as we continue. And uh, one, another reminder as we move into prayer, uh, that prayer will be the last thing we do today. So just one more reminder that if you want to be a part of that Bible study that starts on Sunday, Invitation to the Bible, Sunday at 4 o'clock, you need to private message us on the church Facebook page or email church office at fumcmomel.org or private message me. Somehow let us know and we can send you a Zoom link if you want to be virtual in attendance. We can uh, tell you how to get into the building for a very socially distanced interaction 
if you would like to be there and sit a little over six feet apart from others and and have that experience that way but but uh, don't miss it it's going to be a great experience a great overview of how the old testament and new testament fit together and how jesus uh fulfills and connects with the ministries of the old testament let's go ahead and pray holy god i thank you and praise you for your love i thank you and praise you because your mercies are new every morning i thank you and praise you because you have given so many blessings and I confess, Lord, that I take those blessings for granted sometimes. We take your blessings for granted. And one of those blessings that you have given us that we often overlook is our physical bodies. Thank you, God, for joints that bend. Thank you for skin that protects. Thank you, God, for fingernails that protect the ends of our fingers and toenails that protect the ends of our toes. Thank you, God, for eyes that blink. Thank you, God, for the ability to smell, to see, to hear, to taste, to touch. I thank you, God, for our physical bodies. Lord, our bodies bear a lot of different kinds of scars, uh, things we did in, in hurry in the kitchen or in the workplace or at the workbench that maybe we injured ourselves and there are scars. Um, there are uh, ways in which our bodies change over time and we get wrinkles and we get blemishes and our hair changes color and becomes maybe less plentiful sometimes. Uh, God, there's so many things that happen with our bodies that we um, find frustrating. Help us, God, to reframe our thinking about this gift that you have given us. Help us, God, to see the changes in ourselves as a testament to lives that we are living, to years that you have given us, to time that we have been able to invest in the life that we've been given and the friends we have and the family that we have and the careers or the vocations that we have. God, help us to see our bodies in that way as a sign of a life well lived. God, we pray for those that are battling with major health struggles and awaiting information uh, for uh, tests that have been done at this time it is hard to turn to to this piece of our life to our physical bodies that have always been there that we've been that we've taken for granted and then discover that there is a problem and that they are not there for us in the way that they have always been we pray god that you would help us to be supportive and encouraging to everybody who is in the midst of a health struggle we pray, God, that you would help us to be supportive and encouraging to everyone who simply wants to improve their physical health. Help us, God, to be the encouraging friends uh, when it comes to exercising. Help us, God, to be the encouraging friends when it comes to healthy meal choices. Help us, God, to be the ones that tell people, I know you can do it when they face a health challenge instead of saying, it's really not that big of a deal to gain a few pounds, to get a little less flexible, to be a little less mobile. Help us, God, to be people that cheer one another on. God, we pray that you would help us to meet the physical needs of the world. Help us to meet the, the needs of hunger and help us to meet the needs of clothing. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to honor your gift of the physical body by helping people to care for their physical selves when they do not have the resources that they need. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for all of the gifts you've given us, and especially this day for our physical selves. And we pray, Lord, that everything we do could be done for your glory and for your honor. Thank you, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for joining in. Good to get to be with you this morning. Uh, and uh, please uh, take care of yourselves. Be good to your health. And uh, we will see you again next week. Bye-bye.